Hello, I'm Neil Mullinger. I'm the Product Manager for Verification IP here at Synopsys and I'm here with Bernie DeLay, who's our Director of R&D. Uh, Bernie was a key driver in developing our System Verilog Verification IP technology and he's here today to talk to you about his insights into that technology and why we chose the architecture that we did. Great, thanks Neil. Um, as you know, we've been developing VIP since about the mid-90s approximately. About four years ago, we took a step back. At that point in time, we are actually developing all of our VIP in Vera. Okay? Languages like System Verilog and methodologies like UVM came around. And what we chose to do initially is we actually wrapped our Vera in System Verilog and UVM in order to, to support the methodology. Found there were several issues with that, um, you know, because it was wrapped, performance wasn't great. We couldn't get the deep methodology support that was really needed because we had to take that approach. So we started talking to both internal and external experts to find out, you know, if they were developing VIP, how would they do it? What approach would be best? When we did that, basically we came up with this architecture. If you're familiar with System Verilog and UVM, this should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, basically, we started with a VIP, and it is developed in System Verilog and natively in UVM. From an architectural perspective, if you were developing a VIP, you'd go, okay, it's UVM, I'd have a driver at the bottom. Let's say this is USB in this particular case. That driver would be playing the physical layer. You'd have layers above that. That would be like the link layer, the protocol layer, etc. A normal stacked architecture that you'd find in most protocols out there today. Uh, throughout that, you'd represent things as objects, UVM objects, things like ordered sets, packets, transactions, transfers. Those kind of things are represented just as you would expect in UVM. On top of that, you'd have a sequencer, or actually a couple of sequencers, because in addition to your normal protocol, you also probably have sideband control signals in the form of service requests that you'd want out there. So you'd have a sequencer and a virtual sequencer controlling both of those, exactly like you'd expect to do it if you were doing it yourself. You'd also have your passive or active monitor, works in both modes out there, implementing things like protocol checks, functional coverage, providing an analysis port with that result in, in the case of USB transfer that you might use for scoreboarding. So you have your base VIP then implementing your protocol. We looked at, okay, what else do you really need to do protocol verification? Some of it's pretty obvious, some of it may not be so much. Since this is UVM, the first thing we decided to do was actually develop a sequence collection. Okay, a sequence collection is really just what it sounds like. It's a collection of UVM sequence items. They implement basic transactions like read or write, but also more complicated meta transactions like a read followed by a write, etc., etc. So we provide a whole collection of those with the VIP. We looked at what would it take to configure the VIP, and while we support a normal UVM configuration object inside the VIP that you can configure with the config DB in, in UVM, you can randomize and all that kind of good stuff. We decided to also support another method with the configuration creator GUI that actually allowed you to configure the VIP more easily. Basically, it walks you through all the attributes of the configuration object, validates that it is a valid one, and writes out a config file. So we support both ways of configuration, both a file based through this configuration GUI and a more traditional UVM constrained random verification methodology through a configuration object. Okay? Next thing we looked at is test suites. Okay, test suites, again, we decided would be implemented in System Verilog and UVM. Probably not too surprising there. They implement all the necessary scoreboarding, test suite level protocol checking. They actually heavily use our sequence collection to implement the test suite. So really, with the sequence collection, you actually have a lot of the work done for you. And with the monitor, you have all the physical checking and the functional coverage naturally to see what's there. So speaking of functional coverage, the next thing you really need to think about is how do you relate that back to the specification? So what we chose to do is we provide a verification plan with the VIP that maps that protocol specification to the functional coverage that's been implemented in the VIP. Now I know how well my test suite and my sequences utilizing my functional coverage map back to the protocol specification through the verification plan out there. The last thing we looked at, which might not be something you may do if you're doing this yourself, but since we're Synopsys and we have access to good, really good debug tools, is what it would take to actually facilitate debugging more at a protocol level and not at your traditional you know, wire or signal level. Okay? 
So when I talked about these, config, these uh, objects inside here, like packets and transactions and transfers, we came up with a protocol analyzer that actually allows you to visualize that more easily and understand what's happening in the protocol more readily. So basically, if you sum it up, we chose to develop VIP exactly the way you probably would. Okay, that is if you had you know, several years of experience with protocol expertise and naturally system error log and UVM knowledge out there. Okay? So you know, basically if you want to find out more about this, go to synopsis.com slash VIP and you can uh, find out more about what we talked about today.